I'll go first because I'm shy. Hi, this is Rick Storm. Darren Dowler. Over here, Ricky Biacciola. Rob Mitchell. I'm Jimmy Ashenbetter. Okay, great. So, um, this is an auspicious night. Um, ever since post Beatles, Cleveland has been a very fertile place for music. And we've had some really amazing bands that have come out of Cleveland over the years. Tree Stumps, Grasshoppers, The Alarm Clocks, Baskerville Hounds. I think I'm forgetting one. Oh yeah, The Outsiders. <laughs> um, you guys um, and seem to just have never actually quit, even though you kind of did. I mean, there have been so many changes over the years in the lineup and everything. Rick, you're the longest standing member. And Rick, you're the second longest standing member, right? I'm sitting right now, but that's probably accurate. Okay. <laughs> so, um, coming out of that initial period of of the the you know the Beetle Bloom, if you want to put it that way, what was it like in Cleveland with all of that you know the whole scene going on? We didn't really spend a lot of time here. <clears throat> in fact, if I recall. The only performance we did here downtown Cleveland was with uh, the Gene Pitney tour okay. at the old Hippodrome Theater, and uh, that was that was quite a package with with uh, so many of the '60s stars that we spent some time with on the road with. But uh, as far as the scene here in town, there was plenty of local local activity, local music going on. Uh, and, and national acts also passed through uh, ourselves. We did not, I think we only played here once or twice over the three year period that we were actively uh, performing. Now, the other one that I forgot to mention was the choir, because they were around at the same time yeah. too. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a very fertile period. So, um, going, going forward then, um, Talk about the, uh, the your TV appearances and how they helped to spread the whole thing because you know you had Hullabaloo and Shindig and Dick Clark and you know so many shows that were spotlighting all these new groups. Yeah, we still have videos that somebody managed to save from the uh, Shindig show when the Outsiders <coughs> performed there. And there were several other shows, uh, I don't know if they were nationally syndicated or not, but they were not really, uh, every time we get into a town that had a teen show, of course we would do that. And whenever we came back to Cleveland on a break from touring or to recording, or, or to record, we would do the upbeat show, or the big five show, it started out, then it became the upbeat show. I and they remember. Were so, they were so very kind to us to let us come on whenever we came back into town. And uh, probably the, the later one, when, uh, with Paul Revere and the Raiders, we did the Dick Clark, uh, Where the Action Is show. Uh, from Boston, actually, we were touring. We happened to pass through Boston. I don't recall who we were with. That might have been Syndicate of Sound or one of those, one of those popular groups at the time. Mm -hmm. So that was an outdoor. A video taken uh, for the TV show where the action is. So there was always a lot of teen dancing type shows across the country. Whenever we would make it to a town, we would always find out where that was and and uh, and go there and, and uh, sing a song. And Rick, how did you come to join the band? I had known Ricky from playing in another band with him. And uh, just called me up one day and said that he's put the band back together, Blues Brothers style. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, asked me if I was interested. The band. I played with him before, and I was looking for something to do, so I said sure. And how how long has that been uh, going on now? 
that was 2017 when we had our first, how can I put it, our first lineup of band people. It's changed slightly since 2017, but the core members are here with us now. And uh, so I'm gonna say, yeah, 2017 was the rehearsal year. And we got out of the gate uh, in, in 2018. Uh, one of the first jobs we did was we, we were at a casino in Las Vegas. Yeah. So uh, right when they had their springtime outdoor opening concert thing in the back of the casino. So, uh, and since then, yeah, it's been good. But uh, yeah, the, the, the core guys are here. Okay, and, and you guys, how did you come to join the band? I actually, uh, this is my second stint with the Outsiders. I played with Tom King back in the early 90s when he had a version of the band okay. put together and all the 60s bands were making a research at Turtles and, uh, Association, everybody was coming back out and touring and I was part of that for a little bit. And uh, then a few years ago I met Ricky, actually through Jimmy, because just before I did the Outsiders thing we had some mutual friends, I've known this guy over 30 years, I think. I'm sorry. And, <laughs> and, we, and we, we stayed in touch, yeah. and uh, we, I just wanted to go out and see his band, Then I heard that Ricky was playing with him, and uh, so we met uh, probably about, what, five, six years mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, he's stayed in touch, and then he yeah. called me a few years ago and said he's putting us back together. He's a bass player, and um, here we are. Yeah. And Jim? Absolutely. The, uh, I've known Ricky, I don't know, I, I was a fan of the music way back, and uh, you know, uh, still enamored with everything they did, especially being, you know, the Cleveland boys up there. And um, uh, it's a blessing to have an opportunity through Ricky saying, hey, you want to do this? And uh, ironically so, when Rob had played with Tom King and those guys, I was also invited to play with them, but I couldn't because I had too many other things going on. There's no way to commit. So here we are, full circle and back. And, yeah, right. How many times have I heard about uh, bands who who have members who are playing in three or four different groups all at the same time? Oh, yeah. It didn't used to be that way. Yeah. So way back when you were in a group, and now and was it. everyone's in different projects. Yeah. yeah, and and I always wonder and and marvel actually at how they can keep them straight, especially when there's a lot of times you know, totally <laughs> disparate styles of music. Oh, yeah. So now, Darren, that brings us to you because you have had a rather illustrious career, as I mentioned to yeah, you earlier. Sure. Um, not only are you singing with the Outsiders now, but previously you did some, uh, some work with Paul Revere and the Raiders and the Righteous Brothers and a whole bunch of different groups. Actor, screenwriter, director, how do you keep that all, you know, in focus and and still come out and be able to make great music? I have an understanding wife to start. Uh, she lets me work you know, all day, every day. Uh, you know, I've loved all those things since I was a little kid. And as soon as I got into rock and roll, I also got into acting. I, I decided at 12 years old I was going to go to L.A. and go to film school and went to the Sid Field Screenwriter School in New York City. and took cinematography courses while I was playing music to support myself. So first love's always been music, but I always liked the way music and film work work together. Mm -hmm. And so I was fascinated with that. So I started writing, you know, all the stuff that I have published, my own stuff, is in television shows and movies. I didn't really write for the mainstream. Well, I probably wrote for the mainstream, but I never got that mainstream hit. But right, right. I've had music and movies and TV shows for so long. It's been a, it's just, you know, when you love what you do, it's hard to explain what you do. You just love what you do and you just do it. Yeah, and how did you come to join these uh, guys for this you version know what? of The Outsiders? I'm going to have to interrupt you there. Darren did not join us. The Outsiders are the four members sitting here. Okay. Darren is performing with us okay. as a package show, and we found it very uh, compatible to back him up when the occasion arises. So it's one, it's one of those things that came to pass when, when Nostalgia acts perform together. Mm -hmm. uh, individually they may not have, I hate to say it, the drawing power alone. As a result, the packages, packages that are, are often presented by show promoters uh, at a theater or at a festival or a fair. Uh, or a casino. Uh, yeah, it will have multiple Anywhere. acts. Uh, it's, just, sales. It's, more <laughs> it's more appealing. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and it works out really well because, you know, I mean, you were all within that same musical framework all That's at the true. same time and doing That's those true. kinds of songs. And so to be able to cross-pollinate that way, I think, is, is what's going to make this a really magical event tonight, I think. It is. So we, It's going to be. We, uh, we got that invisible... I, I'm going to be new age here, but we got that <laughs> invisible vibe thing going on. I know what you're talking about. And I mean, the four of us, the four of us fit together quite well. And with Darren out front, uh, we kind of fell into place with his uh, his requirements, his set list, his musicality, and uh, we were all familiar with the Paul Revere and the Raider songs from playing them when they were new in the mm -hmm. '60s. So. Uh, it just it, it fell together. It came together, and uh, we're hoping that it continues. Uh, in the, and in the meantime, Darren's going to be moving on himself to uh, a lot of good things coming down the road. But uh, anytime we get a chance to play together, it's a given. That's great. So um, to wrap things up, last but not least, um, new outsiders material. Um, when I was reading the bio, it said that you had come up with some new material that you had done. You recorded a new album. Um, so what is the plan going forward? Or is there going to be any more recording? Or? We're going to pass that over to Jimmy. Yeah, the, uh, shockingly so, both the new releases, the first one that came out was I've Got a Heart Too. And the second one is called You and Me. Uh, they have charted on Cashbox. Um, I don't, I don't pay attention to the numbers, but they're up there. I mean, they're uh, a top twenty material. Great. We were stunned. Great. Um, uh, you know, I brought the songs in. Here, guys, here's a sketch. What do you think? And everybody just to grasp it, and we turned them into outsider songs. Well, look what the and, monkeys uh, did a few years ago. Well, you know, yeah. and folks love them. And uh, it's, it's a blessing to be playing with these guys, but to also have people also like what we're doing too that's just as important let's mm. be honest yeah you know i i think a lot of it kind of goes back to the whole punk ethic um because it was like they they the the whole punk scene at least as far as the united states is concerned new york yeah um it arose because it was it was an outcry against overburdensome music that was like a whole album side and whatnot, which yeah. isn't to take anything away from Echoes or oh, yeah. you know I or mean, Tangerine Dream or of or, or, any. or yeah, <laughs> but that was what the whole punk thing was, and it was to go back to those you know early '60s garage rock kind of things that you guys made famous to begin with, and so now I think it's a you know full circle moment where it's come back to that again and a lot of that has to do with punk and when I got a chance to interview the Ventures many years ago it was back in the 80s oh, that's um, they told me that you know even though they had stopped actually being the Ventures you know back in the 60s or whatever Rodney Bingenheimer was playing their stuff on the radio in LA and or at, not on the radio at his club and the kids were coming up to him and asking him who this new band was that they loved so much. And so he started playing the Ventures. He tuned everybody into them again. And eventually the Ventures went out back out on tour and did really well. And now it's the same kind of thing with you guys, I think, you know, where it's come back full circle. And I think the time is right for, you know, a, a return to this form of music. Well, so I agree. thank you very much. We agree. Let's all be outsiders. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. I oh, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.